So we're moving right along in our data types. Uh, the next one up to talk about is a tuple. Now a tuple is, a tuple is a collection of objects, just like we saw in lists and dictionaries. But a tuple differs a little, as you can expect. Um, now if we compare it to a list, a tuple is a sequence, just like a list. But the only difference between the two is um, a list is mutable and, and tuples are not mutable. So we cannot change them once they're created. So if you start to notice a pattern here, we're covering every type of combination of sequence or not sequence, mutable or not mutable. So that gives us a lot of options to work with that in, in uh, Python. So that's a pretty cool feature of Python. Um, so how do we create a tuple? Well, there's a couple ways to create a tuple. So let's go ahead and look at the first way. And we're going to create a variable. And I'll use my trusty var. It's equal to, and to create a tuple, we we use parentheses. So we go parentheses, and we go one, two, three, and four. All right, comma separate each object, and we got numbers one, two, three, and four. Okay, and there's our var. Hit return. Now, if we call it, we get the same parentheses returned to us. So that's how we create a tuple. One way. Another way would be uh, let's create another variable. We'll call this one a. Um, to create an, a, a tuple a second way would be one, two, three, and four without the parentheses but comma separated. Hit return, call A, and we got a tuple. Now, if you want to create a tuple um, that only have one object in it, so let's go ahead and do B is equal to, and we do one, comma. All right. If we didn't do comma, then B is going to represent. Um, object one as a variable but it's just going to be an object of one but if we put a comma here it's going to create a tuple so if we call B you see it's in the tuple form all right so let's just take a look at what happens if we don't put a comma you should know this already we create a variable and it's just object of one all right so the comma plays a big part in creating tuples that way and we could also do uh, use the tuple build in function all right so parentheses right tuple and then parentheses and then we need it iterary type in here so that would be like a list or a string something we can iterate through which means we can um, move through it all right so let's go ahead and do a list and we'll do one two three and four square brackets close out the parentheses hit return and there we go we got a tuple so we changed the list into a tuple um, so how how do we access the objects in the tuple? Well, it's just like we do in list. It's very simple. It's a uh, um, slicing. So let's go ahead and create another one. Actually, we'll just use var. So we'll call var. And we see that we still have one, two, and three. And we'll do var square brackets zero square brackets. And think about it. What should this return? Well, it should return, return one. There we go. Since it's the index number, 0, 1, 2, and 3. All right. So let's do another one. Var square brackets 1 square brackets returns 2. Now, if that's confusing to you, go ahead and um, re reassign your tuple to something that would make it a little bit more easier when you're doing slicing or practicing, practicing slicing. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, if you call var, we got 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And now when you slice, it would be a little bit easier to understand the positioning. So if I want 0, I call 0, since that's the first object in the tuple. And 0, 0. All right. Boom. All right. So that's just one way to kind of like practice slicing in Python is if you want to practice, you create a list or a tuple and then just use the numbers as their actual index positions. Now. As we've seen before, we can in the list we would be able to reassign um, an object in the list. So if I want to change zero to um, let's say one again, I would just do something like this an assignment operator. But this is not going to work because tuples are immutable. So I hit return. It says tuple objects do not support item assignment, which means they're immutable. We cannot change them once they're created. All right, so 
Tuples are very useful, just like lists and dictionaries. And what I like about them is that they, they cannot change. So if our program does something funny and starts changing out um, data in, say, a list, that might be harmful to our to our program. It might uh, make it fail, or it might inject data that we don't want injected into a list that we're using. So a tuple would be a good way to protect against that. Since we cannot change it once it's created, then the program wouldn't be able to inject into it, or a hacker would not be able to inject to it into the list. So just something to think about, right? So we'll see you in the next tutorial when we talk about, uh, I don't remember what's up next, but we'll talk about something cool. So I'll see you then.